On this episode of Monswet Garage, we're gonna to get to troubleshooting this fuel gauge. Did you know carb cleaner is fantastic for killing mosquitoes? <laughs> Before we get started taking readings, let's take a few minutes to understand how this system works. There's three essential elements here that we need to understand and their relation to each other. That's voltage, current, and resistance. Our battery provides 12 volts. That 12 volts is fed into a voltage limiter, which is on the back of the gauge cluster. That voltage limiter brings that 12 volts down to five. That five volts then goes into our fuel gauge and out again back to the sending unit. This is where resistance and current come in. So our fuel gauge is looking for how much current is traveling through this ship. What limits that is resistance. The more resistance there is, the less current there is. So with this particular style of fuel gauge, the more current there is, the more your needle is going to be towards full. The less current there is, the more it's going to be towards empty. The sending unit is the part that changes in resistance. It has a variable resistor in there called a rheostat. And as your float goes up, resistance decreases, current increases, and your needle goes up. As your float goes down, resistance goes up, current goes down, needle goes down. If you're dealing with the original Chrysler sending unit, it's going to be between 10 and 73 ohms. That's your range. Now there's some play there. On the low end, uh, it's actually 9.6 plus or minus one. And on the high end, it's 73 plus or minus 12. So you've got a lot of range on the high end. We'll actually take a closer look at that in a minute because I've actually got my original sending unit over on the bench because it has been replaced. And what we have here, it's an old sending unit for the car and it's been hooked up to a multimeter set to measure resistance. So the float is in the full position and you can see we have 79.34580, yes. It's moving around because the table's actually causing this float and arm to move. And that's why we're seeing the fluctuation. But we're right around 77 to 80. That's a good spot. I didn't actually replace this because it didn't function. I replaced it because it was leaking from right here. So now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna swing our fuel arm. And as you can see, it's dropping. And it should drop fairly linear. But if you see how it's bouncing around right now, 89, 127, 160. So this rheostat is actually bad as well. It should be linear from that 80 or so that we saw on the full end all the way down to what should be zero on the empty end. So some of that might have been my leads. I'm not like clamped on or anything. But we're looking at 22, 20, 21, 22 on the low end. This should be closer to 10. So we probably wouldn't have got a true empty reading from it, but we would have got a pretty decent full reading. So if your sending unit does this, don't put it in there. It's going to leak. I learned that the hard way. Now in electrical troubleshooting, there's a method known as half splitting. That's where you pick a halfway point in the circuit that's easy to get to and you take a couple of readings and figure out what's going on. So the idea with half splitting is that you take some readings at a particular spot and depending on what you get tells you whether your problem is before that spot or after that spot. In this particular case we're going to look at our fuel gauge. What I'm looking for uh, is I'm looking for 5 volts here and 5 volts here. Now, the voltage limiter doesn't give you a steady five volts. It will actually cycle up and down. And so when you're looking at it, it won't be steady. It'll, it'll be kind of moving around anywhere between zero and five volts. That's normal. So using the half split method, if I've got five volts here and I don't have five volts here, that tells me my problem is right here. If I don't have five volts here, then my problem is somewhere before the fuel gauge, either with the voltage limiter, probably with the voltage limiter, uh, or with the 12 volts coming from the battery. If we have five volts here, 
and 5 volts here, we know that our problem is somewhere between the fuel gauge and the sending unit. Let's check that out. All right, if you look in the very bottom left of the screen, you'll see three studs. The two on the left are for the temperature gauge. The one on the right, and that one right there. Those are my two for my fuel gauge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the ignition and I'm gonna take voltage readings at those two points and see what I have on both of those studs. What I'm hoping to see is a fluctuating voltage between zero and five volts. Hi, welcome to the land of discomfort. So my voltmeter is set up in the 20 volt range. My ignition's on. Now I'm gonna get up here and try to reach this to take a reading. I've got a nice screw I can use right here from the ground. Ow. Fat hands are bad. All right, so we are on the first post. And uh, my voltage is exactly what I expected to see. It's bouncing around. Uh, the highest I'm seeing it is about 6.6 .6 volts. Oh, there's a 7.3. So let's look on the other side. There we are. Same thing. I know I have power going in to the gauge and coming out of the gauge. So now we need to look for this same signal back at the fuel sending unit. Hello, and welcome to the belly of the beast. We're gonna check our fuel sending unit wire for that same voltage. I am again looking for voltage, and I have zero voltage. I see nothing. That means that I have a, either a break of the line somewhere between the gauge in here or I've been thinking about this it might actually be this connector itself it's old it's been out in the elements so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna cut it off so connectors off I am going to take and strip back a bit of the wire Maybe. There we are. Take that and give her a little twist. And then, I'm gonna twist it around my meter probe. Oh, hell yeah. So now that I have that wire bare, I'm actually seeing a signal. This is what I expected to see. So now, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna connectorize this with loop terminal. I'm gonna put that loop terminal in the stud, and then, we are going to check our gauge and see if it works. All right, let's see if we get fuel gauge. Well, crap. I was excited. I thought it was gonna work. I know it's not my voltage limiter because my alternator gauge works. What I'm hoping has not happened is when I was tightening down that nut and I spun the bolt that it was on it, I'm hoping I didn't ruin my sending unit doing that because I'm still getting nothing. You know how we can find out? I need you to keep an eye out for me. Let me use a little video magic. I need you to watch that fuel gauge for me. I'm gonna go tanker in the back for a minute and you're gonna watch and let me know if you see anything. All right, I'm doing it. Is it moving? Yes, no, maybe. Eh, guess I'll have to look at the video. Our gauge is still not working. Here's what we know. We know we've got good voltage into the gauge. We know we've got good voltage out of the gauge. We know we have good voltage back at the tank but gauge still no worky worky. That leads me to believe that the gauge itself is bad. I have to admit, I was pretty excited when I saw voltage back at the tank and when the gauge still didn't work. It was a kind of a bummer, but that's the way it goes. So eventually, we're gonna pull out that gauge. We gotta pull out the dash anyway to clean back behind there because it's just gross. What is that? What the f is that? When we get the dash cluster out, we'll actually pull that gauge and test it individually.
Even though we didn't solve my fuel gauge problem, I hope I've given you enough information on how to troubleshoot your own fuel gauge problem so you'll be able to look at yours. If you did find this video helpful, take a moment and let me know down in the comments. Next episode, we're going to be installing an AFR gauge to help us tune this carburetor a little bit. And we'll go into some of the other things that I've done to the car that I've not necessarily put on video because sometimes you just got to put your head down and work. Until next time.